All right, let's continue our face-off between the Thunderbolt 4G and Atrix 4G and take a little closer look at the user interface on our two contestants. Both of them run Android 2.2 Froyo as an operating system. Big difference is you've got two different user interface overlays on the Thunderbolt. You've got HTC Sense 2.0 and on the Atrix 4G you have Motorola's Moto Blur. Both phones are going to offer you seven different panels that you can customize with either Android, Moto Blur, HTC widgets, application shortcuts, bookmarks, folders, or contact information. This is the stock widget on the Thunderbolt. These are your uh, shortcuts for contacts uh, on the Atrix 4G along with sticky notes. What have we got here? We've got the calendar widget on both, bookmark widget, I'll let that load. Um, home screen, this is clock and let me get to that real quick. Let's go to home. Here's your clock and weather widget on both. Just the weather widget on HTC. Friend stream widget which will handle Twitter, Facebook, as well as MySpace. There's a comparison on those two. Um, here's your calendar widget. This is the, your reader widget. Where's the reader widget on here? Here it is. Here's the reader widget. And again, one thing that's different about Motorola's widgets is they can be re resized. Providing I can get my hand to do it, there we go. So you can resize the widgets on the uh, with the Atrix 4G. Again, you've got a special customization icon and application on the um, Thunderbolt 4G. You can change scenes. Let's look at your scenes, and basically what it's going to do is going to change the wallpaper as well as the widgets that are laid out, whether it's social work or play. Then they both offer wallpapers and they both offer live, both support live wallpapers as you can see there. And then you've also got skins, which will change the complete look. Let's apply slate. See how long it takes to actually set it up. There we go, we've got slate applied. Let's go back to our home screen so you can take a look at it. And then you've got your widgets. As far as widgets, there's a total, I think, of 66 different widgets. As you can see here is your bookmarks. You usually have choices, calculators, calendars, clocks. Those are a number of the widgets that are available. Application shortcuts, again, that's going to be the same on both. You can also download different sound applications for the... Um, with HTC Sense and the Thunderbolt 4G. So there's a look at just the overall customization. Both of them have notification bars up at the top that are going to show notifications for emails, text messages, uh, application updates, voicemails, things you would expect. Also on the Thunderbolt, you're going to get a list of the last eight applications. You can use that as a shortcut. Tapping on any one of those will take you directly to it. Again, you can slide back down notification bar, get back to notifications to close the tap on the bottom or slide up from the bottom. Either way, we'll close both. Uh, both of them offer multitasking with by holding down on the home key. It'll bring up the last eight apps. As you can see there, also tapping on the home key from the home screen will give you a seven panel overview that can be used as a shortcut system. You can see tapping on it. On the Thunderbolt, you can squeeze the screen together to get back to it. You can't on the Atrix 4G. Basically what happens if you slide from panel to panel, you'll see you get a shortcut system down here at the bottom. Um, so it works a little bit differently there. Oh, let's see, both of them support live wallpaper. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I've missed that's um, unusual between the two of them. No, I think that pretty much covers it. So there's a look at the user interface comparison between our uh, Thunderbolt 4G and Atrix 4G. All right, let's compare the messaging application on the Thunderbolt 4G versus the Atrix 4G. We'll start with the Thunderbolt. We're going to go into menu and settings. There are three different keyboards available on the Thunderbolt 4G. And I wanted to show you those. You've got QWERTY, phone keypad, as well as Compact QWERTY. Compact QWERTY is going to look like uh, Blackberry Sure type. So there are three different input methods available. There is no swipe. Compose message. Go down here again. You've got your microphone lower left hand corner. Call John on Tuesday. Uses Google, works very well. The one thing it doesn't offer is capitalization. Let's go in and take a look at the keypad now for our meeting on 
Wednesday. Picked it up very well. As far as attachments, got picture, video, audio, application recommendation, location, contact V card, appointment, V calendar card, and slideshow. And to address it, CRA, there I am. Set that up. And we're all set. Hit send and we're off. So there's messaging on the Thunderbolt 4G. Let's take a look at the Atrix 4G. We'll go directly into messaging. New message. Hold on in here. Get our input methods and we've got two. We've got swipe as well as multi-touch. We'll take a look at swipe to start. You'll notice with Froyo 2.2 you have speech to text down here in the lower right hand corner. Call John on Tuesday. And again, you get two different choices with speech to text on the Atrix 4G Vingo as well as Google. The nice thing about Vingo is you'll notice you get uh, capitalization. And we'll try and finish this for our meeting on D N E S D A Wednesday. And that's with swipe. We didn't get the capital capitalization. I might not have that sweat set up, but uh, for the most part, that covered it pretty well for our. The hour didn't come out right meeting on Wednesday, but for the most part, it's pretty close to address it. Again, same CRA. And we've got that. And then as far as attachments are concerned, again, picture, audio, video, slideshow, name card. So we're missing sharing an application, which you can do. Um, it's set up a different way, though, on the Atrix. And then also we're missing the... Um, what was it? The calendar V card as well. So uh, missing a couple things that are available on the uh, um, Thunderbolt 4G that aren't on the Atrix. But other than that, they're pretty close. So there's a look at messaging on both the Thunderbolt 4G and Atrix 4G. All right, what do you say we wrap up today's face-off with our browser comparison between the Verizon HTC Thunderbolt 4G and AT&T's Motorola Atrix 4G. I've got them both running off the same Wi-Fi network. I have the display set to automatic brightness, which is about a third of the way up. I've got both of them updated with Adobe Flash 10.2, and I have it enabled, so it should load all Flash ads, and I think that's about it. Let's head over to bookmarks and see if we can't kick this off, and we're off. I think that was pretty close to even. And it looks like the... Thunderbolt is done. Wow. Wasted no time. Atrix 4G is still loading. Atrix 4G is now done. Any issues with rendering from the Thunderbolt? None at all. Very smooth as you can see. Double tap to zoom in. Pinch to zoom. HTC rewraps. Fit the display. Very smooth, very nice. All right, Atrix 4G, again a little sticky at the beginning, just like the Thunderbolt. Double tap to zoom in, pinch to zoom, double tap to rewrap. One extra step, double tap to zoom out. Any issues rendering? Nope, no issues whatsoever on both. Both very smooth, both did very well. All right, let's head over to Engadget and load that. And I know it's on both of them. Matter of finding it, there it is on one. It's in the other, and we're off. And again, the Thunderbolt, well, the Atrix 4G, they're both kind of neck and neck. Who's going to take it? And it's going to be the Atrix 4G took that with the Thunderbolt right behind it. Atrix 4G. No issues scrolling whatsoever. Double tap to zoom in. Nice and clear. Pinch to zoom. Double tap to zoom all the way out. Doesn't seem to have any rendering problems whatsoever either. Double tap to zoom in. Pinch to zoom. No problem from either one. They both handle the web very well. Let's head over to CNN and watch a video. So we'll put these guys through the test. First we'll head over to CNN. That went pretty close. And see who's going to take this. 
neck and neck. I think it was the Atrix 4G. Hard to tell. Atrix 4G is playing some flash in the upper left hand corner that is not being picked up by the um, Thunderbolt. Double tap to zoom in on both of them. And let's go down here and find a video. Alright, the first seven days. And it was pretty even. So you can spool this up and get it running first. Looks like the Atrix 4G is up and running. Still waiting for the Thunderbolt 4G to load. There we go, there's the Thunderbolt. All right. It didn't seem that either one of them had any issues with loading the Flash video. Again, they've both been updated to Adobe Flash 10.2. Atrix 4G seemed to handle the web a little bit quicker, although the loading of a smartphone Envy, the Thunderbolt 4G, was definitely quicker the first web page. But after that, it was the uh, Atrix 4G seemed to uh, come in ahead of time and definitely handled the video, uh, Flash video, a little bit quicker than the uh, Thunderbolt as well. So anyway, there's a look at our two contestants of Verizon's brand new HTC Thunderbolt 4G, their first 4G offering, along with AT&T's Motorola Atrix 4G, which I think was their second 4G offering. Uh, make sure you stop by SmartphoneEnvy.com. Give me a couple days. I'll have posted photos and videos from both of today's contestants, so you can take a look at that, as well as my written review and my winner of today's face-off. Hope that's been helpful. Take care.